Premier League football makes its long-awaited return to Emirates Stadium soil on Saturday afternoon, when Arsenal pit their wits against Wolverhampton Wanderers on match day one. As the Gunners begin their latest quest to kick Manchester City off of their throne, Gary O'Neill's men have top-half aspirations in mind for 2024-25 a couple of months before Mikel Arteta's native Spain won the gold medal in the 2024 Olympics men's football tournament. The Arsenal boss once again had to settle for silver in the Premier League, as the Gunners failed to end two decades of top-flight hurt since the Invincibles of 2003-2004. However, while their title fight tailed off towards the end of the 2022-23 campaign, the Gunners were still in with a chance, albeit a wafer-thin chance, of pipping Man City to the post on the final day, but a hard-fought 2-1 win over Everton ultimately went unrewarded. Arteta's arsenal can no doubt be described as going from strength to strength, though, and there were only two blots on the Gunners' notebook in pre-season, a penalty shootout loss to Manchester United, whom they beat in 90 minutes, and a narrow defeat to Liverpool. The Gunners have already competed in two Emirates bouts this month, teaching German invincibles Bayer Leverkusen a lesson in a 4-1 romping before beating Lyon 2-0 in the latest edition of the Emirates Cup, their fifth successive competitive or non-competitive win at their North London home. Not since a controversial 3-1 loss to Aston Villa in 2013 have Arsenal commenced a Premier League season at 3 p.m. on a Saturday, but it has been 45 years since the Gunners last failed to score in a competitive showdown with Wolves, who have conceded to their capital counterparts in 33 games running. That sensational sequence unsurprisingly represents both Arsenal's longest scoring streak against a single opponent and Wolves' longest run without a clean sheet against a particular side. And the old gold faithful may travel south in more hope than expectation this weekend. After hovering close to danger in the first knockings of the 2023-24 campaign, Wolves established themselves as a solid mid-table outfit under O'Neill and even threatened a top, 10 charge in the spring months, only for a dismal set of end-of-season results to plunge them down to 14th spot. Five of Wolves' final six top-flight contests last term ended with O'Neill's side coming up second-best, including each of their final three, but they returned to top-flight duty with a respectable 66 success rate from six pre-season friendlies including an exceptional 3-0 beating of RB Leipzig. That emphatic win was sandwiched in between losses to Crystal Palace 3-1 and Rio Vallecano 1-0, though, and they have also lost their Premier League opener in each of the last three seasons of fourth on the spin this weekend would represent an unwanted club first. Speaking of unsightly sequences, Wolves are out to avoid a seventh straight loss against the Gunners this weekend and have not won at the Emirates since November 2020 in a contest that was marred by the stomach-churning head collision between David Luiz and Raul Jimenez. While neither Kieran Tierney hamstring nor Takahiro Tomiyasu ni will be ready for Arsenal's Premier League opener, Arteta is keeping his fingers crossed that Jurian Timber, who tore his ACL on the opening weekend last year, will shake off a foot issue to feature, and the same goes for hip victim Fabio Vieira. The Dutchman is one of a few left-back options for the Gunners' boss a list that also includes Ricardo Calafiri ahead of his expected Premier League debut, but Oleksandr Zinchenko impressed in preseason and should be given the nod from the first whistle. Saturday's game will also mark David Reyes' first competitive match since his permanent move from Brentford, while Thomas Party is seemingly set to be given the nod in the number 6 position as Arsenal continue to work on the signing of Real Sociedad's Mikel Marino. Arteta and O'Neill can empathize when it comes to unavailable fullbacks, as Nelson Semedo's red card in the final game of last season, a 2-0 loss to Liverpool, means that the ex-Barcelona man is banned for the first three games of the new term. With Semedo suspended, Matt Doherty and new signing Pedro Lima will battle it out to start at the Emirates, where O'Neill expects all of Mateus Cunha hamstering, Daniel Poden's calf, Mario Lamina thigh, and Jorgen Strand Larsen groin to be available despite their niggles. However, Leon Chaiwon ankle is still sidelined while teenage winger Enzo Gonzalez suffered a devastating ACL injury while playing for Paraguay at the Olympics and is facing a lengthy recuperation period, joining luckless striker Sasa Kalajcic in the Cruciates club. Hey race how the Gunners could line up on Saturday afternoon. Goalkeeper and defenders. David Raya, the Spaniard will be looking to continue from where he left off last season having claimed Golden Glove honors during his debut campaign. Ben White, White's position is not under threat. Having starred during the second half of 2023-24, to 
the ever-available white will play a key role in the club's title charge this term. William Saliba It's been a busy summer for Saliba, but he's returned to the Emirates as fresh and classy as ever. The Frenchman scored against Lyon last week, and he'll be aiming to match his center-back partner on the goals front in 2024-25. Gabriel This time last year, there were doubts over whether Gabriel would remain at the club amid interest from Saudi Arabia. It'd take a few weeks for the Brazilian to be fully reintegrated. There will be no such experimentation at the start of 2024-25. Oleksandr Zinchenko Zinchenko has played his way into Saturday's starting 11. With Jurian Timber returning from a foot injury and Ricardo Calafiri still settling in, expect Arteta to revert to the Ukrainian. Midfielders Thomas Party. A lack of change in midfield means we should see Party get the nod at the base of midfield. There's no denying that Arsenal are better with a fit and athletic party purring. Declan Rice. Assuming party starts, Rice will continue in the left-sided eight role he excelled in last season. Martin Odegaard. Odegaard was majestic in the corresponding fixture last season, and the skipper will be hoping to dazzle on the opening weekend. His evolution into an all-phase player has been crucial in the Gunners' success. Forwards. Bukeo Saka. It was a fairly subdued preseason for Saka after his Euro 2024 exploits, but he'll be ready and raring to go on Saturday against a Wolves backline that looks a little undermanned. Kai Havertz, Gabriel Jesus was one of the stars of the summer, but Arteta will not be going without Havertz. Mikel Arteta Arsenal players vowed to win league hours after title heartbreak. Manager reveals title charge effectively began on the final day of last season when his squad came to him to promise we are going to do it. Mikel Arteta has revealed that Arsenal's charge for the Premier League title effectively started on the final day of last season, when his players told him that this would be the year they finally lift the trophy. Arsenal's players and staff went for a team dinner in central London after the last game of the 2023-24 campaign, after Manchester City had won the title by two points. We had a gathering together with all the club, and the players were saying to me we are going to be better. We are going to do it. We want more, said Arteta, whose side take on Wolves in their first game of the new Premier League campaign on Saturday. They are the ones driving that ambition. Telegraph Sport understands that owner Josh Kroenke and many of the families of the players and staff also attended the gathering after their match against Everton in May. Everybody was talking about the same thing, that we are not going to stop here and that we want much more, said Arteta. We know the things that we can still do better, and how the players can still evolve. How we have evolved as a club is huge as well. How we feel playing at Emirates Stadium is another one of the areas we have evolved. Those margins are huge, and we have to really, really use them. After consecutive second-placed finishes, Arteta described his players as really enthusiastic and really sharp ahead of their opening game. The squad will be boosted by the return to fitness of defender Jurian Timber, who had a disrupted preseason due to minor injury problems. We're still very far from perfection on the challenge of winning the league for the first time since 2004. Arteta said it's like you're trying to climb the highest mountain, swim the most difficult lake in the world and you're surrounded by people trying to achieve the same ambition. We're certainly going to try. For me, we're still very far from perfection. This team still has levels to reach, and they give me the reasons to believe that, because I see the way they train and the way they play every day. I believe there is still big room to improve. When you're looking ahead and see everything that we are doing, everybody is so enthusiastic about it, that willingness to do better, to keep being demanding of each other, to look for higher ceilings. This is what everybody needs. It's motivating. It's inspiring. Meanwhile, Arsenal remain in talks with Real Sociedad over midfielder Mikel Marino. Telegraph Sport understands Arsenal's initial proposal for Marino was rejected by the Spanish side, but there remains optimism a deal can eventually be struck. It remains to be seen whether Arsenal choose to focus on the sales of fringe players, such as striker Eddie Nkidia, before pushing ahead to finalize their move for Marino, a Spain international who helped his country to win the European Championship earlier this summer. Despite Brentford striker Ivan Toney being available for transfer this summer and expressing a desire to join Arsenal, a move to the Emirates appears to be off the table. While Toney boasts an impressive goal-scoring record, Arsenal's decision stems not from concerns about his ability, but rather from concerns about his personality. According to reports from Football Insider Team News and Ticks, Arsenal officials met with Toney 
but found his personality to be incompatible with the club's current squad dynamic. This explains the silence surrounding a potential transfer, despite earlier reports suggesting Arsenal were keen on the striker. Tony, who signed with a new agency last year, had set his sights on a move to a big club, with Arsenal being his preferred destination. He believed his style of play would complement Mikel Arteta's system, but unfortunately, his personality didn't resonate with the Arsenal hierarchy. Although Tony's form after returning from his gambling ban wasn't particularly impressive, it was his personality that ultimately deterred Arsenal. While Brentford values Tony at around 50M, his contract expires next summer, making this the ideal time for them to cash in. However, with Arsenal out of the picture, finding a suitable buyer for the 27-year-old striker remains a challenge. For Arsenal, the decision to pass on Tony emphasizes their focus on building a cohesive and harmonious squad. While his goal-scoring ability is undeniable, the club prioritizes personality fit and team dynamics. The Gunners will now turn their attention to other targets as they look to strengthen their options ahead of the new season with a midfielder their priority. A forward and a number two goalkeeper also remain a possibility depending on their ability to move Eddie Nkidia and Aaron Ramsdale on.